The world today is characterized as volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Faced with this unsettling reality, people often turn to meditation. But does meditation really help in the face of everyday challenges? Whenever the situation is becoming chaotic, uh, the first thing that meditation can help is to make you normal. And, and in the chaos, normal be can become extraordinary. As more and more people take up meditation, interest within the scientific community is also growing to try and understand its benefits. Various researches have been undertaken around the world to try and gauge its efficacy. I find that the, the main uh, findings from the research are quite limited. Uh, the researches which are the most revealing uh, on what are the main changes which are happening when you practice regularly meditation, it helps uh, three things. Self-awareness, uh, awareness of what yourself, attention control, and emotional regulations. So these are the main, three main claims which are supported by strong evidences uh, from researches. So we can go peacefully with that. For all the others, the impact of meditation may not be that relevant or so significant, or you may not see uh, that it has a stronger effect than uh, swimming or, or playing piano or others. While positive results in the three areas of self-awareness, attention control, and emotional regulation may not seem like much, they can have a far-reaching impact on people's lives. Self-awareness. Some people are just stunned to see that they are totally disconnected from their body. So just the fact that you close your eyes and scan your body, they have never done it. You know, they are so focused in what they are doing today that just at one moment to do that, it's a life experience for them, life-changing experience. And that is true. Then when you go into the body, when you go into feeling, naturally you switch off the monkey mind. So then they realize, wow, and there is less noise. Okay. So these, just these things, they are really in terms, uh, in, psychologically, they are really revealing. Our brains are buzzing with electrical impulses. An EEG can measure this in terms of brain waves. The more the activity in the brain, the higher the frequency of the waves. The frequencies have been plotted in a range from gamma, that is very high frequency waves, to beta, alpha, theta, and finally delta, that is very low frequency waves. In our waking hours, we normally stay within the gamma, theta, and alpha wave states. During sleep and meditation, we can approach theta and delta states as brain activity slows down. This begs the question, is meditation just like sleep? So when you are sleeping, you are not aware of what is happening outside and you forgot everything that you had might have experienced in your mind. And at the end of it, you often feel, you often have this sense of heaviness and grogginess and slowness. But when you meditate and you go into these uh, theta, even touching the delta, the very deep sleep, where we nearly have barely uh, any consciousness, in meditation we still have a sense of awareness. We can still hear the noise outside. We may have some little thoughts we are aware of the, our surroundings. So actually this is helping us. We are not sleeping. We are going, becoming aware, we are becoming conscious in our subconscious mind. At the same time, the same sense, there is a thin layer of rationality which says me, okay, this is like that, this is like that. And as we practice, as we are able to do this travel into the depths of the self, then it, we become familiar with it. Then we have a crisp of all these subtle things which are beyond our normal awareness. But as we are getting used to the sense of it, then we become familiar with it. We become sensitive to these different states 
and spectrum of consciousness. And then we know that we are into a journey within, which is allowing us to have access to different kinds of understanding. But at the beginning they are very, is it, is it correct or is it bizarre or, or is it a movie or things? Well, as you do it daily and after years and years, then you realize you can make sense of all of these experiences. Meditation is a journey into our subconscious mind. It turns our gaze inward. But isn't there a danger that as we become more and more inward-looking, we start to become unaware of the outer world? What is happening also in, uh, from the researches which was observed on very advanced meditators, like people who had 10,000, 20,000, maybe up to 40,000 hours of meditation. So that represents at least two, three hours a day for 10 to 20 years. Okay, So not only they were able to have some theta wave brain activities, deep subconscious uh, wave brain activities, but they also had very high frequencies activities. They went into gamma. Gamma wave brains, they are very, very active. The firing of uh, the neurons is, is very fast. Huh? And there is a lot of exchange of information. So that means that they are very conscious. So both extremes. Yes, not only they are in both extremes, but they found that there was a synchronicity between these higher parts of the brains with the lower parts of the brain. Wow. So maybe we can say this is super consciousness or not, or it is the ability to capture this deep wisdom or deep connection with the self and to understand it or to manifest it at the conscious level. When we are not engaged in any activity, which can be up to 47% of the time, our brain slips into its default mode network, commonly referred to as the monkey mind. At this time, we are engaged in three key mental activities. One is self-referencing, thinking about me in the past or in the future, worrying about what I had done, what I should do, what was, was it right, or what, always about worrying about the past or the future. Two, social comparison. Am I understood? Do they understand? Will they like it? Am I better mm. or not? Three, rumination. Always thinking about the same thing. This default mode network can be co-related to feelings of sadness and unhappiness. When we are meditating, we switch off the default mode network. We are freed from this monkey mind. Okay. And not only that, and that was observed by Judson Brewer, is that we activate some other parts of the brain which are related to sensing, being in the present moment. We are not connected to time references. So we are now moving from a, th a narrative word Mm -hmm. a monkey mind, a word of worries, a word, yes, with yes, all yes. of this noise, to a word of experiencing. However, most forms of meditation require us to focus on a thought or object. This can be hard for many of us. It can also give us mental fatigue. Judson Brewer observed two other techniques that also help to switch off the monkey mind. The second one is open awareness, or what we call meta-attention. So, uh, focused attention, you think about something and you hold it, okay? Meta-attention is that you focus on that, and then your mind starts wondering, kitchen, this and that, worries, house, wife, office, and, and you take some perspective and you see, okay, my mind is wondering. Okay, so now bring it back gently, softly, to the object of meditation. And then it will come back like this and you bring it back. This is meta-attention. Or another image is that you're lying on the grass and you watch the sky and see the clouds passing. And you just observe everything. The clouds are your thoughts. Okay, you're not the thoughts, but the clouds are passing and they are going. So you just relax and just observe he found out that when 
people, when practitioners use meta attention, it's easier for them to maintain this ability to switch off the default, default one network. One. But the third method, which was most efficient, is when we go into feeling. Okay. So the brain cannot think and cannot feel at the same time. Okay. So when we go into feeling, it was so much easier. They had like the highest absence of, uh, of uh, the default mode, the network. chatter, the mind yeah. chatter. Yeah, yeah. Let's take this experience. When or uh, you know you are with your family member or you have a loving moment, you are with your mother or your daughter. Okay, and uh, at that moment, you don't think, oh. Why do I love my daughter or why do I love my mother? At that moment, there is an alignment between body, mind and heart, self. And because of that alignment, you feel good. So if you have this good moment in memory and you close your eyes and you start thinking about it, and you, you see the scene, then naturally you will start, you know, even smiling and you will feel it and, and you will see this happening through you. Okay, so this is one of thoughts, an idea, you know, come into an experience. And in that moment, you are not, you know, judging or, you know, questioning any questions. You are just into the moment of, of the feeling. And this is what we do in heartfulness meditation. We bring our focus attention at the beginning with a subtle suggestion on the source of light in the heart. And then we try to feel it as an experience inside us mm -hmm. below our meta-attention, non-judgmental observation. So these three mental processes are naturally trained when we practice heartfulness meditation.